everyone, welcome back. We have another reaction video for you and joined with me is my girl and makeup artist, Nikki LaRose. Makeup Hi. by Nikki LaRose. That's me. She joins me whenever there is a makeup portion of the reaction video because it just makes so much sense. It does. It took us forever to get to this I point. I know, I used to sit back in the camera and watch the whole thing, right? And go through her notes like, well, I would talk yeah. to you about the, the makeup reactions. And one day we got a comment saying, I know. Why don't you have Nikki do the reaction to the makeup? And our minds were blown. We're like, why didn't we think of this? Yeah, this whole time. Anyway, we're, here, we're now. here Yeah, <laughs> We're here and today we're looking at Lola Tung. She's from the show, The Summer I Turned Pretty. She's 20 years old, so I'm really curious to see what she's gonna use mm -hmm. for both her skin and for her makeup. This is Lola Tung shares her berry lip on Ooh, Vogue. I'm excited pop, for that. A little pop on the lip. But before we get started, just a reminder that reaction videos are meant to be entertaining. They're also meant to be educational, but more importantly, they're just meant to start a conversation around your skincare products and now also with your makeup, makeup products as well. But at the end of the day, everything is personal and this is truly just, it's really just to get us talking so yeah. that you can learn a little bit. It's fun. Hi, it's Lola Tung and I'm gonna walk you through my skincare routine and a berry lip makeup look. I, I'm gonna just put it out there right away. She's perfect. She's so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> She's so pretty. So pretty, perfect skin. Yeah. I mean, the facial features, everything about her, it's like perfection. So she could probably put anything on and we're gonna be like, she's gorgeous. Yeah, we're gonna wanna buy everything she puts on just for that reason alone. I'm starting with uh, this Good Molecules Nice and My Brightening Toner. And I just use my hands. Nice and My Brightening Toner. We're assuming this is a daytime routine, right? Mm -hmm. She's prepping for makeup, right? Mm -hmm. That Good Molecules Nice and My Toner is great. I mean, I haven't used it in a really long time, but it's a really nice hydrating toner. It can help even out your skin tone a little bit, soothe your skin even. Mm -hmm. It's very affordable. So I think that's always a big draw. And the way she applied it is perfectly fine. Basically like an essence. Mm -hmm. I want to say it was James Welsh who got me to purchase that product. I've never tried it. I mean, it's just a really nice basic Nice and my toner. Yeah. It like feels hydrating and it's nice and refreshing and a good way to start your skincare routine if you're prepping your skin. I love that. Then I go in with this herbivore lavis oil and I take like four drops. And if my skin's really dry, I'll do more than that. Now that is interesting to me. It's been a while since I've seen somebody use that lapis oil from Herbivore. I want to say that it's actually not for dry skin, even though it's oh, oily, really? right? I want to yeah. say, I'm going to look, we're going to confirm this right now. It's for blemish prone skin. That's, mm. that's where I was like, it's funny that she said, you know, like depending on how dry her skin is, yeah. how much she puts on. So this is a blue tansy oil. Blue tansy is great for soothing any visible redness that mm. you might have in your skin. People think that it's great for acne when they hear the word blemish, right? Isn't that mm. the first thing that you think of? A hundred percent, yes. So it can be used on mm -hmm. people with acne prone skin, but this is not an acne product. And I think a lot of people mm. associate it with that. The ingredients are squalane, which I love. It's yeah. a really great oil. Your skin recognizes it. So you taught me about that one. Yeah. It's one of my favorites. It's got some humectants in it. It really is just a, a lot of oil in my opinion. And it smells nice and it has the, the tansy. So to me, this oil is more of a soothing oil. So I think a lot of people use this wrong, mm -hmm. right? This is one of those oils where when I think about like everything I've like talked about over the, the past few years mm -hmm. about skincare, this is one of those things where I have to kind of undo, like I have to like help people understand why they use an oil in their skincare routine. And it's not that I think oils are bad, right? I use oils whenever I, I feel like it's appropriate as well. It's just that they're using them in the wrong way. So again, remember that oil does not hydrate your skin, yeah. right? So oils are meant to almost be just an emollient. They're softening mm -hmm. for your skin. They can be nourishing for their skin. They can have ingredients like blue tansy in them that might help to soothe your skin, but they're not hydrating your skin. The way that she's using it isn't necessarily bad, right? Squalane is especially great because it's really light and it can feel like it helps to, I guess, balance out your oil production mm -hmm. because of the way that your skin recognizes it. But she only put on that hydrating toner mm -hmm. and then she put this on. So if she does have dry skin, I would argue this wasn't enough nourishment for her skin. Right. She would probably want to put on at least a hydrating serum and then use this oil to lock that in. To like in. lock it in, right? Okay. Yeah. Or even better use a moisturizer after that toner that she yeah. put on, right? So I would have preferred that she does that, but we don't know what her next steps yeah. are gonna be. But it almost, like to me, like when you put the oil on, you're done with your skin. That's exactly what I think too. Right? I think it was, as like my final like 
yeah. stuff. Yeah. So, and then she put like what four drops? Yeah. And but they were said, small. Yeah, drops small drops, too. which I think is great. Oh, okay. That's the way you should be using it. Oh, okay. I think people use it sort of like a serum, mm-hmm. which I'm gonna bet is how she's using it. Mm-hmm. She said I'll put more if it's, if my skin's dry. Mm-hmm. And again, just a reminder: if you've got dry skin. You can put as much oil as you want. It's still going to feel dry. Growing up, I mean, I had, I feel like it started after I got bangs in middle school, (laughs) but I started getting really bad, just like breakouts on my forehead. I would wash my face and use like the tiniest bit of moisturizer made my skin worse. I really started learning how to take care of my skin correctly, probably while I was filming season one of the summer debris. And then I go in with this herbivore pink cloud moisturizer. So she is using it like a serum, Mm -hmm. right? She goes in with the Herbivore Pink Cloud Moisture Cream, a dreamy moisturizer that visibly plumps the skin. So this is Tremella Mushroom. It's very hydrating for the skin. It can be very nourishing. Also has squalane in it, Moroccan Rose for a floral scent. So this is your typical moisturizer. Mm -hmm. It's got glycerin in it. It's got your combination of your humectants and your emollients, your occlusives. If I recall, I, I remember liking this moisturizer. It feels very like light and nice and moisturizing. It's mm-hmm. like very nourishing. So in this case, it's not terrible that she put on the blue tansy, but she'll get more benefit if she goes opposite direction, right? right. right. And we also saw, it looks like she might be putting on another mm-hmm. serum on her skin, which is not After. the right, yeah, it's yeah. like, it's just not the right way to do it. The way you want to think about your application of skincare is you want to go with the lightest texture to the heaviest texture. And oil sometimes can be confusing mm-hmm. because you're not sure if that feels heavy because it's not thick like a moisturizer, but right. oil is pretty heavy. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Something I do want to point out though that I thought was really interesting is that she said that she used to get these breakouts mm-hmm. and then she would, you know, like- Do like a cle- tiny bit of moisturizer. Yeah, she'd like cleanse her skin and then do like itty bits of, of moisturizer because she's going through that same mental process that everybody goes through where you're like, I just need to dry my skin out. Yep. And then she realized if she nourishes her skin, her breakouts go away. Yep. And, then, and it's basically your your skin's just screaming at you, right? Yeah, like do something, like, please. please, I need help here, all right? I'm trying to fix myself. I don't yeah. know. Obviously, your skin doesn't it's do that. It's a cry for help. Yeah, yeah, it's not a scientific explanation, but that's essentially what's happening yeah. there, right? And it's true. If you nourish your skin, sometimes that's really just what your skin wants. Yeah, so. for sure. Next, I use the Westman Atelier when I get those dry spots and it's hard for makeup to sit on top of it. This just saves the day. And I have tried to curate a skincare routine and makeup routine that's entirely cruelty free. I feel like there are a lot of brands now that have moved in that direction and it's it's always been something that's been important to me. A couple of things that I want to note there. First, let's look at the Westman Atelier Skin Activator Serum. Just by nature of mm-hmm. what it is, serum, I would have absolutely put that on after the niacin my toner. Right. Then I would have put on the herbivore moisturizer. Mm -hmm. Then I would have put on the oil. Mm -hmm. Especially, you know, here's the thing. This is where it always like gets me a little bit. The serum from Westman Atelier is $150. Mm-hmm. And I haven't had a chance to try it yet. I actually like some Westman Atelier products. I know you love oh, their I, I love their, their makeup, makeup yeah. Anyway, this is their like foray into skincare. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure this is a beautiful product. I actually do have it at home. I just haven't had a chance oh. to use it, to open it and use it. It has 12 actives, including hyaluronic acid, peptides, niacinamide, noni fruit to flood the skin with hydration. There's a lot of really nice hydrating ingredients. There's even beta glucan, which I personally really like in skincare products. Mm. They even have ceramides. I mean, it's a really nice product, right? But if it's $150 for a beautiful serum, you don't want to waste it yeah. after your moisturizer because it's, it's just, just gonna not going to get top, the ability. Right? I mean, listen, if you don't have a ton of skincare products on, it'll all get to the same place at mm-hmm. some point, right? Okay. You're just not getting that full quick benefit, Mm -hmm. especially when it comes to hydrating products, right? She's mostly used hydrating and nourishing products. Right. So if you're like trying to get that nourishment from them, when you go in that proper order, where it goes lightest to heaviest, Mm -hmm. then you're getting that better absorption. Yep. Right? That's that's really what it is. So you don't want to waste that potential for absorption. Mm-hmm. So next I use this Coco Kind sunscreen. My mom was really, really adamant about me and my sister wearing it when we were younger um, and reapplying throughout the day. I was always the kid who was like, did everybody apply their sunscreen? But I just do like, a, I don't want to say that much. 
I've used a sunscreen like years ago. This one is a mineral sunscreen, the zinc oxide sunscreen, which you could kind of see when she was putting it on. It has a yeah. little bit of a white cast on it, but it looked very moisturizing on the skin. She could probably put a little bit more, mm -hmm. just a little bit more, but I love hearing this. I mean, I'm not even gonna critique the sunscreen. It's like she put her sunscreen on. She did a decent amount, probably more than the average person we see. Yeah, I, I put totally sunscreen right. on. The thing that uh, I'll point out though is that her mom, how incredible is that? I know, I like that story. To have a that mom cute. who's like, yeah. you gotta put your sunscreen mm -hmm. on. I, I can only wish, and I don't blame my parents because they were, it's a different generation. Yeah. Right? My mom was handing me the baby oil. <laughs> when I was like five, she's like, here, like just uh, soak up the sun, you know? Now it's the opposite and yeah. it's so great to know that, you know, someone in her 20s is benefiting from the fact that her mom was very aware yeah. of the sun. And look at her skin. It's like, it's amazing. amazing. So here she goes with her lip balm. The Leah lip balm, it has this like cooling effect. It's kind of like a minty sort of. And I love to hydrate my lips before I, I do a bold lip because I feel like it makes the application a lot easier. <laughs> yep. Totally, 100%. We do it every day. Every day. Every time I see you, mm -hmm. we're lathering it on. <laughs> I've used that Ilya lip balm. I, like I haven't. It. Yeah, it's nice. It's very light. It's not a super heavy one. So I want to say it's probably really great for prepping your lips for, yep. for, for lipstick. So then I, I use this Herbivore Rose Hibiscus Spray just for the vibes. Listen, I'm all about vibes. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> this is pure hydration. Yeah. Once you put that sunscreen on, you want your sunscreen to dry down. You know, like a shield. Like a you want to like, exactly. Yeah, literally. Like, like turn into like a shield on your skin. Exactly. Yeah. You're spraying some hydration on. Is yeah. it going to destroy it? Probably not. But is it giving you the best use for your spray toner that's supposed to hydrate your skin? No, mm -hmm. it's not. So if you like the way it smells, fine. But it's not It's not benefiting your skin at this point. Yeah. At least she called out is just a vibe. At least she's about to vibe. Yeah. And she's about to do something Ooh. that I wouldn't do after sunscreen. Yeah. I love these lip tinted eye masks. Those we really got sent a bunch of them on set and we use them all the time. Smart. And I love them so much that I bought them for my mom. One thing that became a little difficult when filming was self care <laughs> for sure. You know, you're working long hours and when you're not on set, I guess you're sleeping. Or, I mean, not necessarily. Like we were hanging out all the time, which was amazing and wonderful. But I think that's the thing that I had to realize was like, oh, I have to get sleep and, and take care of myself in order to have energy to give 100% um, on set. This is a self-care moment. I love a self-care moment. And yes. I also love Deepika and Lip Tinted. And those are great eye patches. Yeah, those eye patches are so much fun mm -hmm. also. Here's the one thing where I'm gonna truly give a critique, mm -hmm. okay? She put that sunscreen on and we were so proud of her. Yeah. Those are some wet. Yeah, as they should be. Eye patches, yeah. as they should be. They're meant right? to hydrate. They're meant to hydrate, depuff your skin, mm -hmm. cool the skin. But when you pull them off, they are going to remove that sunscreen that you put there. Yeah. And that sunscreen is especially important there because- It's your under eye. It's your under eye. Yes. And that skin is thin. Yes. And if you're trying to Very prevent prone to wrinkling. aging. Exactly. Yeah. You already know what I'm Oh, thinking. I know. Yeah. I know. So she's basically going to end up with zero sunscreen protection under yeah. her eyes because it's going to eat away at the sunscreen and break it away because well, it's Because it has to. It's supposed to penetrate your, the top layer of your skin and yeah. get it hydrated and plumped and prepped and all those yeah. great things. So yeah. Yeah. That sunscreen doesn't stand a chance. Exactly. So what I like to do with, and we do this all the time too, yep. but even when I'm at home, I'll put on eye patches mm -hmm. right after my moisturizer is what I've started doing now. I used to try to do it like in the serum step and it just didn't make sense because I kept losing that hydration from my serums. So mm -hmm. I now sense. what I do is I put on my moisturizer, I'll put on my eye patches, mm -hmm. do whatever I'm gonna do in between, like in those 10, 15 minutes that I'm letting it cool and depuff. Yep. Take those off. And I put on an eye cream. Yeah. Because you know what? I always use an eye cream this is what when I do I'm too. like prepping my skin for makeup, yeah. right? I, I prefer an eye cream during the day versus at night anyway. Put on an eye cream to lock in that hydration. Mm -hmm. Then I put on my sunscreen. That is such a great tip. And that's yeah. something I do in my makeup kit professionally because like, you know, I do eye patches on all yep. of my clients. You know, I do their skin prep first, majority of it, unless I'm gonna do a primer that's gonna come obviously after and same yep. with the sunscreen, obviously. But after you take those eye patches on, you really wanna lock in that plump, juicy, like hydrated skin. So that's like my ideal time to put an eye cream on. That's yep. when I always utilize an eye cream. And I think she's kind of doing the like, you know how people wear eye patches to do their makeup? Yes. That totally makes sense. But she should have saved some of those yeah. skin prep for later. Right? It's just gonna get complicated also. like. 
Yeah. Because you could technically just not put on your sunscreen, mm -hmm. do your eye makeup, then put your sunscreen on, then yep. put your foundation on. It's like just becoming overly complicated yep. at that point, right? It's like, just yep, like yep. do your eye patches before your sunscreen. Kind of knock it out. Yeah, and yep. you're good. Looks like she's going into makeup. So this is, makeup. this is your territory. I'm excited. Urban Decay liner that I've probably had for too long and I'm just gonna line my eyes. But I have to put, throw it out there. I think that everybody keeps their Urban Decay eyeliners way too long. They last a really long time. For well, ever. not in my makeup kit actually, because I use well, them like constantly. Yeah, but, but I have a personal one, like only one, but it has lasted me a really long time. Like years. Yeah, but I love that formula. I me rebuy too. that formula constantly. Yeah, it is so nice. My eyes while I'm letting these guys sit for a little bit. I like to do like a really tiny wing and just kind of Smudge it out a little bit. Sometimes it's hit or miss. <laughs> it's already a miss. And I take like, it's a little smudgy brush and I just put some of the eyeliner on it. Smart. I'm just gonna go in with this Coco Kind oh. Revitalizing Eye Cream. And it has this hey. lovely like applicator that's also very cooling. So she puts on the eye cream to lock it I'm in. I'm proud of her, yes. I'm proud of her, except she. we're going back to the sunscreen, which yeah. is what is the most important step of this whole yeah. routine, and that it's her sunscreen. Yep. And she has now zero sunscreen yep. under her eyes. That's the only thing. And if she's wearing eye patches to preserve the under eye area, the thing that's the most important is the sunscreen, yep. and she's that's now going to preserve it the most. Yeah. yeah, but she did a good job for eyeliner. Great Actually, job. let's hear about I, the I eyeliner. I feel like she used a lot of my techniques, honestly. Yeah, yeah, oh, she did a great good. job. Yeah, and that color is so pretty of that eyeliner. Yeah, you can't go wrong with like a dark, rich brown. brown. You know, it's good for daytime, nighttime, doesn't matter. Like yeah. it's a go-to. But I'm gonna go in now with this Merit Beauty concealer, minimalist stick in Dune. I love this stuff. What did you think about that? Good. I'm just wondering why is she curling her lashes before she's blending it out? Because that's a cream formula and you don't need to let those dry down. In fact, you should blend those out right away because if you don't blend out right away, you let it just really dry down, it's going to be hard to move. What do you think about that Merit Concealer? Because I'll, I'll point out something I've learned from Nikki LaRose is that you don't always love a stick concealer under the eyes. I don't love them at all under yeah. the eyes because nine times out of 10, they're going to look really heavy and they're going to look really cakey. I like a liquid formula that you you just have more control in terms of like, you can manipulate it way more. You can sheer it out. You can really buff it out. You can make it disappear basically. Whereas creams, it's just a thick cream formula just by nature. In that delicate area, they just tend to look way, way more obvious. And they can also settle into fine lines so much quicker, even if you set it as opposed to like a liquid. So yeah. I'm not big on them, but I have heard a lot of good feedback about that product. So yeah. maybe I should give it a shot. My experience with stick concealers under the eyes is that they're chalky, like patchy. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. They're actually like chalky patchy. is like such a great way to describe it. Chalky, patchy, cakey. I hate that term, but like it's it feels more cakey under your eyes. Yeah. And you know, we have so much constant movement under our eyes. We're just, we have so much expression. This part of our face moves constantly throughout the day, just like around our mouth. So if you put something too thick there, the chances of it creasing and just looking really bad is so likely and I, just, I avoid it under the eye. I think those are great for like spot concealing. Those are what I bust out when I'm spot concealing a pimple or maybe a scar that someone wants covered or anything like that, that I really need to like get full coverage on it. That's when they're good. But under the eyes, I would skip it. You Especially know if you're so young. Yeah, but you know, she's so young. I know she's so young. I bet you she can carry it though. Like it works. It's totally fine. Like yeah. it might make her look a little That's bit more true. dry in the area, Yeah. but I bet it stays in place and she has zero wrinkles there. So she just doesn't even notice that it's chalky. I bet you it doesn't stay in place, but I bet you since she doesn't have any wrinkles, it still looks good, you yeah. know? Right. Yeah. She can get away with it. Use the Thrive Mascara. This beauty sponge is from Beauty Bakery. Okay, so People, she's gonna blend it out with the sponge. She is gonna blend it out, but let's talk about that Thrive Mascara. People love that yeah. mascara. I still haven't tried it. I get asked constantly to try it, and I just don't know why I haven't it's, gone around to it. It's a I good think. mascara. You like it? I like it. I don't know if I would continue to use it, but I understand why people love it. It's tubing, right? Like it's it creates tubing. a tubing? Okay. I think it looks too like... Um, it looks like spiders? Yes. Mm. Like it's got too it's got many spider fibery. Effect to it. Yeah, 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 it's got yeah. the like fibery, like it thickens your lashes and stuff, but it looks a little spidery. It yeah. looks a little clumpy in my mm -hmm. opinion. I could see so that totally. It's just not my look, but it definitely holds your lashes in place and mm. makes them also look longer. So you feel like it holds a curl, like if you were to curl the I lashes. think it does, I think it does. And oh, it does, you know, like that tubing, like, I don't know, I'm 
you know I love a double cleanse. Mm -hmm. So I actually love the experience of like rubbing your mascara with the cleansing balm or cleansing oil and then it like smears out. Yeah. When you use that mascara or any tubing mascara, it's like little It kind of like bits. comes off like little, yeah. yeah it's like yeah. little bits fall off, so. Which is a really cool brand and they're also cruelty free and vegan. I think clean products have definitely affected my skin and, and probably changed it for the better. I mean, this was all new and probably hormonal like within the last year. But I, I will say like I even I had a very different skincare routine a year ago. And I look at pictures from that time in my life when my skin was pretty unpredictable. And I feel like I haven't gotten any crazy breakouts in, in a while. You know, this kills me a little bit. <sighs> Wait. <laughs> I'm gonna breathe a little bit. You know, she, I, so she's using a lot of marketing terms, right? Yeah. Totally made yeah. up marketing terms. One of them being cruelty free. I know there are a lot of people that like actually look for cruelty free. And I understand that because mm -hmm. I love my animals. Mm -hmm. I love my dog, right? I am all about cruelty free also. But it turns out cruelty free isn't really a thing. Almost all brands are cruelty free. The mm -hmm. only way that you're really going to test anything on animals these days is in like discovering a whole new ingredient. Like this mm -hmm. would be like, I'm talking like pharmaceuticals, right? Right. Like yeah. we're not even talking about the beauty industry. Everything from the beauty industry has at probably some point, unless it's like a synthetic ingredient that's like very like newly made in the lab, mm -hmm. all of the other prior ingredients at some point were tested on animals. Yeah. So when you say that you're using cruelty free, no, 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 that product, that ingredient is around because they tested on animals prior to it. Mm -hmm. And you know, now we benefit from it from like years later, right? right. So now that brand gets to claim that they're cruelty free. Like someone paved the way for a lot of these yeah. ingredients. Yeah. And nobody, by the way, is, you know, like chalking up the money to test on animals. No one wants to sign up to test on animals. Like this mm -hmm. has to be mandated on you as a brand. Mm -hmm. Like if you're creating something totally, totally new from scratch, and the safety of it needs to be tested, mm -hmm. then it's gonna be tested on animals, right? Yeah. But that doesn't happen. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. why would anybody create something so categorically new unless it's in pharmaceuticals, which is mostly medicine, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. I know people bring up like China and all that kind of stuff. Well, everything is changing, right? So mm -hmm. like, just like cruelty-free really isn't a thing anymore, right? Like, cause there's no cruelty, right, right? right? Cruelty isn't a thing, I guess is really how I should be saying like this. Like you said, most brands are, it kind of just goes without saying. Yeah, like they are cruelty-free yeah. because no one's gonna chalk up the money. No. I guess the one thing that I guess that you could say if you are a cruelty-free consumer is that there are brands who maybe they do sell like in China or something mm -hmm. like that. And maybe there is that slight chance, I guess, that it's the door is open, that if they were mandated, mm -hmm. they would have to test on animals, right? right? Right. She also used the term clean, that clean beauty has changed her skin. Mm -hmm. Impossible, because there's no such thing as clean beauty. Mm -hmm. There really isn't. I agree with you on that. And I, I, I thought that the like tide was turning, but then I hear someone young like this, mm -hmm. who's like, you know, like saying these words and saying that clean beauty has changed her skin and everything. Everything is a chemical. Mm -hmm reminder, right? All of these ingredients all come from the same place, right? And mm -hmm. natural doesn't mean it's better. Some of the best, safest ingredients are synthetic ingredients. And PS are probably better for the environment because if you're taking from the land, you're harming the environment. You're harvesting mm -hmm. it, right? Mm -hmm. So like clean isn't a real thing. And it's not making your skin any better. No, it's because marketing. it's all marketing. Yeah, it's just yeah. all marketing. So I think the, the big thing here is probably just getting the right products for you, whether they're clean or not. Elf uh, Halo Glow Setting Powder. Growing up, I spent a lot of time with my grandparents, my mom's parents, and my grandfather was Chinese and my grandmother's Swedish. So I'm very grateful that I had those connections to my Swedish and Chinese heritage. It's been really cool to also be on a show that uh, is centering an Asian American family and getting to work with amazing Asian American actors and creators. And I'm very grateful for, for this experience. It's, it's, it's been the best, so. That's awesome. I love, I, love I love hearing that. Growing up, I mean, I never saw one Asian yeah. on camera. Yeah. I saw the Latino side, very few and far between. Yeah, and by yeah. the way, like caricatures as well, right? Like yes. with very thick yeah. accents and like being like, bah, 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 like you know, like, yeah, like mm -hmm. a very much a caricature of what it is to be yeah. Latino. Same with Asian. Whenever yeah. you'd see anybody Asian as a character, they almost were never, by the way, Asian. Mm -hmm. They were like somebody that was playing an Asian person and also a caricature that was oh very gosh. insulting to be Asian, yeah. right? And so it's just amazing. Honestly, it's so amazing yeah. to see how Asian Americans especially yeah. have like become part of the conversation and have 
shows and are on shows and characters on movies. Like it's just, it really, it's like, it's come such a long way. Yeah. Oh my gosh. For real. Yeah. Such a long way. Did you see that elf powder that she used? I don't like that powder. Oh, you don't want it? No, I've tested it out many, many times. I I, haven't used it. I've tried it out many times. I think it's really dry and um, kind of chalky. Okay. Yeah. You know, she feels she's, very dry on your skin. Look at what a twenty-year-old face can just look. She's like hey. angelic looking. I know it works for some people. I just I didn't personally like it, yeah. especially under the eyes. I'd say like it's good for like T-zone mattification, like to mattify that that T-zone oil. But under the eyes, it's especially dry. I mean, she's it sucks young. the moisture away. She's and then young. on top of that cream concealer, I would love to know what that looks like up close. I can't tell. She looks flawless. But she looks flawless from what we can see in this in this view. She looks oh, flawless to be beautiful in twenty. But I guarantee you, if we did that combo on our under eyes, we'd be like, oh my god, give me moisturizer, please. <laughs> give me that spray toner to like loosen it all and just up. like douse it. Yeah. Oh, let's do some eyebrows. Let's do it. Next up, uh, I take this Merit brow gel that I've been loving. I have really gotten some of the sweetest, most thoughtful messages and just, you know, had some of the best in-person interactions too with fans who are just so happy to, you know, see an Asian American family on screen and, and who have just poured their hearts out to me about, you know, what the show means to them. And as a human being, I mean, there's nothing really more you could ask for than that. Oh, that brow gel looked nice. It looked really nice. I think I didn't get it. It looks really nice. And the color that she chose is perfect on her brows. Yeah. Like blended in perfect. So Yeah, yeah that did look good. Neither I would just keep going because like I'm a, if I have a good brow gel, I'm addicted. I will just keep like painting it on and like just I can't stop. I can't stop either. You I know would what? love to do her brows. I know. I know. She's got really pretty love brows too. Such a control freak. Eyebrow gel. This stuff also shoes. I'm gonna use this uh, Merit. Okay, so she went back in for more hold. So I'm assuming that Merit's tinted, tinted brow gel was just tinted. Just tinted. Didn't give her enough hold. They look more laminated now. They, they do. look definitely like more like brushed up and Ooh. bushy. I'm gonna have to try that brow gel. I've never seen it. I love NYX. I wanna try both. I might need to buy that combo. Yeah. Blush in raspberry blue. I love it. And it kind of goes with the, the berry lip we're doing today. I love that color. Oh, the berry was it's beautiful. Stunning. She applied directly to her cheek. Yeah, she was very precious with it. Yeah, very precious very, like, with it. Oh, super cute ooh. though. That color is so beautiful. Cute. I would have yeah. never chosen it for myself, mm. which I think is always like great to see mm-hmm. people put yeah, something on. Yeah, it's fun to see that. Yeah. yeah. She used like a really fluffy brush though for a cream yeah. blush. That was a really big fluffy brush. I think she would just have a really easy time. She had like more of a, just a shorter, more stippling brush. So it's like more tightly compact, less loose, long fibers. Those are more for powder application and for like a soft wash of powder all over or like a powder blush. But for cream products, she had like a hard time kind of blending it in because of that brush is not the ideal shape and size. Merit lipstick. So this is the very lip moment. I've been working with Coach a little bit recently, which is very unreal. And um, they're so cool. And and now with this, this branch, Coachtopia, their commitment to s- sustainable fashion is, is unlike anything I've ever seen. And oh, hello, Berry Lip. Uh, first, oh. Wait, wait, that's beautiful. First off, that is absolutely not Merit. That is Make That's Beauty. Make, yeah. That I is, have those lipsticks. Yeah. I love them. Yeah, I know. You've put them on I me. have so many in my makeup kit right now. I have so many favorites. Yeah. That one is stunning on her. If you guys don't know, Notarium, my brand, is like a sister brand with Make Beauty and all of the other brands that are under the center. We essentially share the same investor, mm-hmm. which makes us sort of like sister brands, I guess. Yeah. We share the family. same investor. We're family. This is not the Notarium office, but Make Beauty is actually still based in this office. So I walked out because I wanted to go get Carrie Barber, the founder of Make Beauty, because I'm sure she saw this video and she felt really sad, right? Knowing yeah. that somebody, a celebrity used her one of her products and then didn't give it the proper credit, called it a different brand. Yeah. It turns out Carrie Barber left. Darn it. But I went over to their beauty closet and I grabbed one of their lipsticks. I'm making an educated guess. Yeah. Because I don't want to open up all of I the different shades. I think it's this shades. one too. I think it's Radicchio. Yeah. So this is from Make Beauty. This is called the Cream Supreme High Impact Lipstick. And I just want to show you. These feel so amazing on your lips. Amazing. They're super creamy. But look at that packaging. Like it is, it is that packaging. And look how, be- yes. I really think this is it. I think this is yeah. the shade. That is so pretty. I, so I want to put it on. Just, just watch it. it. Just watch it on your I own. mean, just look, look how pretty. 
Oh yeah. Oh, that is a reddish berry mm -hmm. moment. I think that's what Gorgeous. she's putting on. I Thank think so you. too. Look how pretty that lipstick is. And look mm. how chic this case is. And by the way, it's refillable. There we go. You're selling all of us I, on it right I, now. I'm, a, I'm Carrie Barber's older sister. Yeah. <laughs> I already have them in my makeup kit. I use them professionally all the time. I have this at home actually too. I don't yeah. have it here with me in Los Angeles, but now I do because I'm gonna take this one for myself. <laughs> now, now it's yours. Um, but just so you guys know, I know it is Make Beauty. I know it's the Cream Supreme Yeah, we know that lipstick. for sure. I think it's the shade Radicchio. It does not confirm that in the description box. But yeah. Yeah. That's it. I just got a text message because I texted Carrie Barber and I said that we're watching this video right now. And she actually says that she thinks the shade is Regenerate, not Radicchio. Mm. Um, so I chose wrong. It's but so I chose it looks similar. I mean, that one's so Regenerate is a so. little bit more berry. This yeah. one is a little bit more red. Has a little more red base Like to it, that yeah. brick red. I had the privilege of going to the uh, Taylor Swift concert with the lovely creator of our show, Jenny Han. I had so much fun screaming those songs and it took me back each era. Wait, wait, wait. This lipstick changed her whole It look. looks so perfect on her. And she has such a great balance of not too much eye makeup. It's like very minimalistic, very modern, very yeah. chic and modern. I like love this look on her. Yeah. With that cheek, it really complements the lip. She really knew how to like go with the right undertone for her blush to go with her lip and to like have that compliment. It just goes, it just totally flows. It looks perfect on her. She looks just really cool. Like cool girl, chic. Yeah, I love it. I, I do too. Even with like her it. hair tone and everything. Yeah. I think everything that's going on with that blush that she's wearing. But that lip just sends over the edge. It's, that lip it is, is just about the lip. perfect Which, on her. hello Vogue. Sorry, of, of course this is personal to me because it's my yeah, friend. Yeah, of but, course. You know, it's it's like this whole video is about the lip and yeah. then they didn't, that's nobody, true. nobody it is about corrected the lip. it. She shared her berry lip, you're her right. Her berry lip. Well, and now she we know. it a different brand. Now we know. So it has been corrected. Let it stand yes. corrected. <laughs> we had a couple Taylor Swift songs in season one of So Much Pretty, which was unreal. The, teaser dropped and Taylor posted it on her Instagram and, and the cast did not know that was going to happen. And Taylor Swift, my face was on her Instagram and I was like, what is life? It's wild and, and wonderful. So I have this NYX butter gloss. Oh. I had many, many NYX butter glosses. This one is in brownie drip and I'm gonna put it over the berry lip for a little extra. Hmm. So we have some new cast members this season. Oh my goodness, Kira Cedric and uh, Elsie Fisher. I can't believe that <laughs> I got to work with both of them. They're, they're wonderful. I often get asked the classic, which team are you question? It's a great combo. There was actually a point where I had all the butter glosses from NYX in my makeup kit. I still love them. I actually, that reminds me, I should go back and get them because it's like an old school favorite. Yeah. And it's been one of those glosses that's been a, a favorite amongst makeup artists, like the makeup community for so many years. It just never leaves. Like everyone still loves them. And they're them. affordable. But they're, they're so good. Like the way they feel on your lips is literally like butter. We like melted butter on. is on your lips. It's so nice. Yeah. We need to buy some. Let's buy them. <laughs> and you know what? <laughs> I will always stand by my answer. Team Belly. I believe it is up to her and no one else. <laughs> and I and I can't even tell her what to do. She should follow her heart. This is an insider yeah. kind of conversation right now that we're gonna just uh, We're not in tune to we're it. We're not in tune, but I am gonna watch the show after watching. Yeah, this I video. am too. Okay, so I think we're done. I'm gonna flip the hair a little to get the full look. This is it. And I think it's the perfect summer look if you want something natural and glowy and easy and a little pop of color on the lip. Thank you so much for uh, going along with me on this, on this journey. All right, <laughs> thanks. Gorgeous. Perfection. She's just young and youthful and fun and like her makeup just is perfect on her. Yeah, you know what I love? And it's like, ah, uh, to be young and beautiful. Wear anything. Try anything. She didn't put any foundation on. She Didn't barely put any any concealer on. Yeah. And it was like chalky. Blush. It was like yeah. chalky concealer. And she, but it still looked good. And it looked amazing on her. Yeah. And then she put on that blush and her skin's just glistening yeah. and gorgeous. Oh. And then that lip just took it over. I like really enjoyed that. Perfect. I could watch her do makeup all day. She's so pretty. She was very soothing. Yeah. Great taste. Make beauty.
Yeah, yep. definitely. Now we know. Now we know it was Make Beauty. Thank you so much for watching that video with us and having those conversations. Yeah, that was fun. I am always down for a debate about cruelty free, especially. I do not want anybody to feel bad for wanting to take care of animals, right? No. But yeah, that is, it's definitely an interesting topic. Yes, it really is. It is. And it, I, I'm gonna stick to my guns that it's a made up term at this point. So if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below. You can find us on social media, Makeup by Nikki LaRose, at Susan Yara. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye.